So YouTube have just released their own keyword research tool, but is it any good? And can we make it any better? All right, confession first. I know I said this in the past that I hate YouTube dark mode. Now I love it. My eyes hurt, I wear glasses. This really helps me. I've been converted. This tool is pretty easy to find in the YouTube studio. You click on analytics and the tab over to the right is called research. It's slowly rolling out to all creators and all languages. The tool itself is divided up into three tabs. The first is a search across YouTube. Anything you want to search for, it will give you a answer to. So if we do a quick, simple search for cryptocurrency, it will give you all of the related searches that are coming up as well as the search volume. A cool little addition here is if you click the three dots on the right hand side, it can take you to Google Trends where it automatically shows you the search traffic on YouTube over the last 12 months. Why is this not in dark mode? Now searches across YouTube are not specific to your channel, which is where the second tab, your viewers searches comes into play. And what this is gonna try and show you is what your viewers are searching for on YouTube. And as you might imagine, we're getting YouTube education kind of search results. Now here's where I have my first little bit of confusion with this tool, how to edit videos for YouTube. Yes, it's saying that it does have a high search volume. But when I go to Google Trends, it's telling me that it said it's lowest search volume in 12 months. So should I make a video on this or not? Now at this point, you can click on the search term itself. This will do a direct YouTube search and you can find out a little bit more about what's going on on YouTube. And what I see here is that large creators have well-established videos with millions of views on this topic. Is this something I really want to investigate? Well, the truth is vidIQ already has done that in the past. And when we tried to make videos about how to edit YouTube videos, they did. Okay, one did excellent, the other one somewhat tanked. Now I don't want to do a shameless plug or anything at this point. <coughs> VidIQ has had a free tool that has done this for many years and what it adds is competition. So if we go back to this search, how to edit videos for YouTube, yes, there is a high search volume, but there is also high competition as we've established. So should a small creator try making a video on how to edit YouTube videos? They're gonna to have to offer something very fresh, very new, a unique perspective for it to break through such well-established content, according to the search rankings. Ah, but YouTube will say they have a solution to this problem for small creators, and it comes in the form of content gaps. So on this first bubble, where it says all searches, if you click it, and then click content gaps only. What this is now gonna show you is apparently search terms that if you mouse over this question mark are underserved on YouTube. Now, if you'll excuse me for a second, I thought I could do this entire recording standing up, but my back is killing. I need to sit down. YouTube describes these content gaps as when viewers can't find any results for their searches, which I find really hard to believe in this day and age on YouTube. Viewers can't find an exact match for their search, which seems to suggest that SEO still has a part to play, at least in YouTube search, or when viewers can't find relevant videos for their searches, for example, the content is old or of low quality. Does that mean low quality in terms of viewer satisfaction or low quality in terms of video resolution? As for old content, let's dive into that a little bit. As we can see here, the content gap is how to change YouTube channel name. And then in response to that, I'm gonna show YouTube exhibit A, B and C. Two years ago, we made a video on how to change your YouTube channel name and it got over half a million views. And as YouTube's functionality for changing your name has evolved over the last couple of years, we've made updated videos that have got progressively less views and have been discovered less by the audience. As far as I'm concerned, I'm doing my job and serving up YouTube new content on that content gap, but it's not rewarding me with the views. Urge to kill rising. In another more extreme example, we have how to make YouTube short. Another content gap, but of a medium search volume. 
I would have thought content gaps would all be of a higher search volume. But anyway, in the search results, I made this video almost two years ago now, how to make a YouTube short complete beginner guide. It has almost a million views, but I knew as the YouTube Shorts platform was evolving, that this video would be soon out of date. And so I made a follow-up video, which is far better, far more up-to-date information, and it has exactly the same title, almost exactly the same thumbnail, and yet it only has 44,000 views, because for some reason, YouTube still prefers this video that's out of date. That's happened to you, hasn't it? Where you've made updated videos to your best search ranked videos and have not performed why is that YouTube? Now I fully accept that this could be me just having sour grapes. The videos made here by Justin Brown and Think Media could simply be better than my updated video. But here's what I think I've discovered from the content gaps, at least for vidIQ's list. Although it suggests there is a content gap for the search term, YouTube still tends to massively favor one particular video for that search term or a couple of videos. In this example, how to hide subscriber counts. We have videos of tens of thousands of views, but there is one outstanding video here, which is quite old at this point with two and a half million views. And if I click onto it and go to the historical data that we have here from vidIQ, it is still getting hundreds of views per hour. If we go back to the search results, we can see that Think Media have tried to edge into this search term as a content gap. Nolan made this video a month ago. If I click on it, and then go to the historical data here. No doubt this is a more up-to-date video and of better quality, but currently YouTube isn't rewarding this video with the views. They're getting four views per hour, 10 views an hour, 15 views an hour. The other video from a couple of years ago has 10 times as many views per hour. So should I make a video about how to hide YouTube subscribers? I'm not entirely convinced, but what I will say is that sometimes search-based content can take a while to take off because we made a video on how to hide subscribers in the past. And it wasn't until a hundred days after it got published that the views really started to pick up. And then 400 days after it was published, it really picked up in traffic, but now it's tailed off. Mm, I guess it would only take a few hours. Maybe you'll see that video on the vidIQ channel very soon. One additional thing to add here is that you can filter by country, be it for viewers, searches and content gaps. If I click this second bubble here, I don't have that many countries to choose from right now, but if I filtered by United States, that will modify this content gap list a little bit. What I seem to be finding as I use this tool more and more, and at least in vidIQ's case, is that the results at the top of the list tend to be single solutions to single problems. How to hide subscribers on YouTube, how to verify your YouTube account, how to change YouTube channel name. What it shows less of is overall strategies, how to get more views, more subscribers get monetized. Those do start to appear in the list further down. We have one here that says free YouTube subscribers, YouTube subscribe, that's a bit random into the medium search volume, then we get a little bit more specific, how to get a lot of subscribers on YouTube, YouTube subscriber hacks. And this is where I would offer you the alternative viewpoint from vidIQ's daily ideas tool, which does tend to know a little bit more specifically about your channel. It's accessed down the left-hand navigation bar. If you just scroll down, you'll see all of the vidIQ tools and daily ideas is here at the top. And from the 50 daily ideas that we've been suggested here from the tool, we can see a nice mix of strategy-based ideas and specific solutions. How to get more views on YouTube videos. Very obvious, but that's right at the heart of what we do here at vidIQ. How to increase subscribers on YouTube channels for shorts. That's gotten a little bit more nuanced. How to make a thumbnail for YouTube videos. Make a professional logo for YouTube channels. How to find the best keywords for YouTube videos, ranking tags for YouTube videos. Ironically, that's pretty much a video we're making right now about YouTube's research tool. I think what I'm trying to say is that while this is a promising start from YouTube's own research tool, it's quite basic at this point. And let me give you another example of this. In the content gaps, we have this phrase here, copyright claim. Now we as YouTubers all understand the premise of that, but there isn't that much context here for us to work on. 
So what we can do through vidIQ's own tools, through our web applications, if you go to app.vidIQ.com, you can put that keyword phrase into our keyword search tool, and it's gonna take you to this page, which is not only gonna give you the keyword score, and you know, the search volume and the competition, but it's also gonna give you related keywords, matching terms, and this, one of the new and personal favorite tools here, it turns a keyword or a keyword phrase into as many questions as you can possibly think of to combat this potential search on YouTube. And it looks a little bit like this. What you have here is not only a ton of video ideas on the topic of copyright claims, but pretty much ready-made titles as well. How to remove a copyright claim on YouTube. How to use NCS music without copyright claims. Very specific, but uh, really useful for a lot of creators. Does copyright claim affect monetization? A huge question that we get asked all of the time. And in this particular query, it has generated over 300 potential options. That'll keep you busy if you're a copyright claim YouTube channel for years. Now that we're over 10 minutes into this video and only the hardcore, most committed creators are still watching, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The stuff that we've been focusing on in terms of research and planning is not as important as it once was. These days, the YouTube recommendation system relies a lot less on the literal search engine optimization keyword research, filling out a title, a description and tags that matches YouTube's indexing. What the recommendation system now prefers is the emotion, the human trigger. What convinces somebody to click on a video, which means that thumbnails and titles are even more important today. And would you believe it? We've got a tool that can help you with that. <laughs> Too obvious this isn't it so back on the vidIQ web app on the channel dashboard screen you can take that keyword that was suggested by YouTube's research tool copyright claim and feed it through our AI title recommendation tool now we're going beyond just the keyword just the idea and packaging it up into something that a human being may actually click why YouTube has a copyright claim on your video and what to do this is defining the target audience and teasing a possible solution in that title. How to fight a copyright claim on YouTube. This is giving the viewer the confidence to know that mistakes do happen with copyright claims and the encouragement, the permission to potentially fight what may be wrong. The goal of a title is to make a human being care, to create intrigue, to generate curiosity. And these title recommendations are trying to do just that. And if you're not happy with any of them, all you need to do is generate new recommendations and you get a brand new set of titles based around copyright claim. Why YouTube thinks I stole a video. What an intriguing title that is. I could definitely make something out of that. Now, just for completeness, I do want to go back to the YouTube research tool to let you know what the third tab does. Next to each of your search terms, you have this bookmark icon. If you click that and then go to the save tab, this is where all of those search terms are saved. What I hope we We've all learned on this little journey through YouTube's new tool is that successful videos take a lot more than just keyword research. There is always more investigation that needs to be done. You can't just take a keyword at face value. You need to know what's already out there on YouTube that represents that keyword and figure out how to package that keyword into something that's going to create curiosity. And if you want to learn more about how you can create curiosity in your titles, <laughs> Yep, it's another one of them. You'll discover seven ways to do that in the video over here.